But for healing to happen, the body has to be in a healing state. And one of the things that's really interesting with the, the Optimum Health Clinic is we have a team of functional medicine trained nutritionists and we have a team of psychology practitioners. And so we work with this, this combined approach. And one of the things that I'm personally particularly interested in is sequencing of treatment. So at what point do you do this, this piece to this piece to this piece? And sometimes recovery from a chronic condition, it's a little bit like you can have the right code for the safe, but you've got the numbers in the wrong order. And if you've got the numbers in the wrong order, the safe still won't open. So one of the things, for example, we look at is the stages of recovery and different interventions can be relevant at different stages of the recovery. So to give an example of that, you can have somebody who, let's say they've got um, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and mm -hmm. they've, they've got issues with their digestive system, they've got a bunch of food intolerances, and let's say their adrenals are working hard to compensate and they've got mitochondrial issues. So in that case, you would look at it and some people would go, let's just give them all the raw ingredients for mitochondrial function. Let's give them D-ribose, carnitine, coenzyme A, whatever, and let's just support the mitochondria. But actually, a little bit like I was saying, depression is normally a symptom rather than a condition mm -hmm. in of itself. Often poor mitochondrial function is a symptom rather than a condition in of itself. Because you want to go further up that chain and go, well, hang on. Why, why is there not enough raw nutrients getting into the, into the Krebs cycle? Well, actually, it's because there's issue of the digestion. Okay, so we, we can see a SIBO issue. So do we go in with, you know, antimicrobials? Do we go in with antibiotics like rifaximin, you know, mycin or whatever? But then we try and do that, and the person's system just goes crazy. It reacts to all of the things that we try, we try to use for the intervention. So why is that? It's because the nervous system is over-agitated. It's a little bit like before um, the, and I'm sure the same thing has happened in other places, I'm sure it's happened in New York, but after the London bombings uh, back in 2004 or five, whenever it was, that before that people would leave their gym bag or their laptop on the London underground kind of all the time on the subway in London, no one would think about it. And then someone would leave their, tennis shoes and a bag on the London Underground and the whole thing would get shut down. It would be like a massive terrorist threat because obviously, understandably, the, the, the whole thing is hyper-reactive and hyper-responsive. Same thing happens in the immune system when the nervous system is overactivated. So the body starts reacting to supplements that are potentially going to help it because it's in such a state of high arousal. So what we often will find is we have to calm the system to then be able to work with other interventions that we're going to work with. And so going back to what you were saying around damage in, in the genes, it's not just about correcting physical imbalances. For the body to be able to actually heal, like the body has an amazing capacity towards self-healing. You know, if we, if, we get a, if we get a cut, as long as we keep it clean, and if the skin's too far apart, we might just kind of sew it back together. But the sewing, the stitches don't heal the cut, the body heals mm -hmm. the cut. If we break, um, we break our leg, as long as we set the bone, okay, we might take some painkillers if the, pain's, if the break's particularly painful, but the body heals it. In fact, with a break, broken bone, the site of the break, as long as it heals, um, I broke a finger many years ago, didn't get set. Not, not, it's not a good example. But if with a, bone, with a broken bone, generally, the site of the breaks actually the strongest part of the bone once it's healed. So the body heals. The body has got a remarkable ability to do that. The question is often not what is causing someone to, to get sick. The question is what is stopping healing? What is in the way of that healing process? One of the factors is often the fact that the system is in such a high state of stress, going back to cell danger response, the body is prioritizing, signaling the fact we're under threat and, the, and there is danger over energy production. Or put another way, it is prioritizing survival over healing. And if, you're being ch if we're being chased by that saber-toothed tiger, digesting the, the wonderful lunch we had beforehand is not a biological priority. Mm -hmm. Healing the cut that we got um, you know, the night before is not important right now. We're just trying to escape. So for, for the DNA to be able to repair, for the body to be able to heal, the system has to be in a healing state so healing can be prioritized.